is so your player is on a bad offense. Um, the criteria for this is uh, an, an, every NFL team, we're going to go through every NFL team that has yet to score 30 points through two weeks. Um, and there are six on the board currently. Um, so we're going to talk through these players, these skill position players, whether you should trade them, whether you should trade for them, or whether you should just hold them on the team if you have them. So we're going to start with the least scoring offense so far in the NFL, and that is your Indianapolis Colts. So, Joe, would you like to kick us off on what to do with this offense? Yeah, you need to drop Jonathan Taylor and trade Michael Pittman. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, they're, I mean, those are the two guys you have on your team. Uh, everyone was really hyped up about Alec Pierce. You know, Paris Campbell made some uh, news. Everyone thought Mo Ali Cox was going to be this breakout here. I mean, I'm pretty indifferent on those guys until we see something pop for – until we see another receiver start getting sustainable targets. I mean, Ashton Dolan was your basically operating as your wide receiver too. Paris Campbell is not existent in this offense. And then you have Alec Pierce who really hasn't even played that much. You got Kyler, Kylan Grayson leading the tight ends and receptions. You got Jelani Woods riding the bench and Mo Alley Cox. He did drop a touchdown last week. So he did get targeted in the red zone, but I don't think – I mean, if you got these guys on your team, they're droppable, or if you could get something from them, trade them. I don't uh, – Alec yeah. Pierce could have something later in the year, but I like Hines, I like Pittman, I like Taylor. That's it. That's all I want on this offense. Yeah, that's pretty much the only real fantasy-relevant people at the moment. Dolan did a great job filling in, so he's kind of someone to watch for. Um, I'm down for a, ten a speculative ad at the moment, but the problem I, I would say is I think what they're missing right now is that clear-cut wide receiver two, and hopefully Alec Pierce can jump into that role. And maybe that's what's going to happen here whenever he comes back, which I believe he might have practiced. I'm not 100% sure at this point, but uh, I think they're pushing – yeah, Pittman and uh, him practiced this mm -hmm. week in, lim in a limited fashion, so – if they can get them two back, I think that this offense changes a little bit because I think it shows that Dolan's a capable wide receiver, but definitely not the wide receiver one. Uh, not that we ever expected it, but they need them back because there's no passing game. And Jonathan Taylor, uh, they didn't really even try to use him, I felt like, because it just was a, a bad game. Matt Ryan looked bad. There was no one to throw to. They should have really gone out and got someone. Like Obviously, they got uh, Pierce in the draft, but like, the wide receiver room, even with those two, is still really thin. And th there was plenty of wide receivers in free agency this year. Well, I mean, we, I think we all kind of thought T.Y. Hilton would be headed back. I mean, would that only too. be there a limited basis probably. But still, it's it's something to have on that offense. Um, I really – I took the over on Jonathan Taylor's receiving yards this, this w past week because I thought th they got to throw him the ball, right? They don't have Pittman. They got to throw it to their potentially best – catching player on the field maybe not maybe Naheem Hines is better than him but I still think Taylor's just as capable but they didn't even do that really he had one like ball. seven yeah he had one ball for seven yards and that's disaster so this just leads me to what I consider a, a hurtful thing for my soul to do but I'm gonna have to admit Josh was right I mean Matt Ryan is washed Carson Wentz was a clear upgrade on Matt Ryan and this offense is dead in the water if they cannot figure it out. I think Matt Ryan is hurt currently, which isn't helping matters, but he does not look like he can complete balls on a consistent basis. And if Michael Pittman's not out there to make him look better, I this team's a trash heap. It's just bad. Well, just imagine if that uh, Pittman injury was a season long injury. That was oh, one yeah. week, and that horrible. looked terrible. And that's that's every that's all Jonathan Taylor's stock at that point too, because like you said, they didn't even use him in the past game, which. They should have, because I mean, mm -hmm. who else are you throwing to? Like, well, they started of off throwing to Heinz a lot, and then they just bailed on that too. So it's you know, I they I would, we thought they had a pretty good schedule, but I mean, their next games they got Casey this week, Titans, Denver, Jacksonville, Tennessee, and Washington. I mean, Tennessee and Washington aren't anything scary, but you know, do we expect them to turn it around right there? I think, um, especially if Matt Ryan continues to struggle. Pittman is a massive buy low for me because people have a really short attention span in mm -hmm. fantasy. So definitely monitor that. I think, I think this will be, I, I obviously they're not going to go in and beat up on the chiefs, but I think this will be a get right week for their offense. I think that they'll show cause Casey's defense really isn't super scary. I mean, they're not, they're not bad, but they're not scary. So I think that Matt Ryan just needs to get comfortable back there and figure out, I don't know if it's play calling or what Frank Reich's been a really smart, uh, head coach this year or in the years past but 
Maybe maybe it wasn't Carson Wentz's fault that they lost to the Houston Texans and didn't make the playoffs is all I had to say. Uh, there is a possibility. So I think our verdict for this team, hold Jonathan Taylor. I, his value is really low right now, so I would not – I think you're going to get a low ball offer even if you tried to trade him away. Uh, trade for Michael Pittman uh, possibly, and the rest of the team probably a hold at this stage of the game or drop, but that's not one I think of our it, options. So I think it'll be real difficult to trade for Pittman, especially seeing how much that he is the offense needed. Or at least yeah. The passing game. Yeah. So I, it'll be hard, but I would not be against trying to get Pittman and be like, yeah, this team's a dumpster fire. You don't want him. Uh, but I don't think you're, you're, you're holding Jonathan Taylor. You can't do anything with him because you won't get no, him. I have seen people dropping Naeem Hines. I, I'm perfectly <laughs> fine with keeping him on the bench because as far as bye weeks and stuff go, I mean, that's easy PPR points right there. So yeah. monitor that. If he gets dropped, you know, and you're not going to start someone, pick him up. He's a good Completely. player. All right, let's move on to our next bad offense, and that would be the Dallas Cowboys. They have scored a total of 23 points this year. I think we can all admit that's a little bit because of Dak Prescott's injury. However, before he even got hurt, it was not like they were exactly humming down the field as is. So, Josh, can you talk us through the Cowboys? I honestly think the Cowboys significantly upgraded from Dak Prescott. And I'm not saying that that's uh, I'm just saying from the sample size that we have, Dak Prescott looked terrible, uncomfortable and everything in between. They were playing Tampa Bay's defense week one, uh, but Cooper rush did, did a really good job. Uh, their defense is going to keep them in games. So I think that their offense will have to score some points because they're going to eventually give up big plays. Uh, but honestly, Zeke, not super excited. I don't think anyone was super excited about Zeke. Pollard has shown exactly what Billy called out at beginning of last year. Uh, and CD Lamb actually had a serviceable game. Um, I, Dalton Schultz, I believe he's injured, uh, may be out for a game. So I think CD Lamb is going to get a pretty decent amount of targets. Keep an eye if CD <laughs> Gallup comes back. He should be rostered in all formats right now. I don't know why he's not. I think he's like 50%. Um, definitely want to pick him up because whether before or after, once Dak gets back, there's going to be, he's going to be utilized and I'm, I'm not starting him until Dak's back, but CD, I think you're rolling out there this whole time. I think Pollard's definitely startable still. I, I think you could try to uh, maybe bait some of these Cowboys players away. So maybe I'd say trade four. I don't think you have to panic just yet. The Cowboys do still have a good roster um, and Dak is only going to be out for a few more games. So I don't think that you're panicking just yet, but honestly, I'm panicking because <laughs> Dak's coming back with the plate yeah. in his hand and screws. <laughs> um, uh, Cooper Rush looked mighty fine against the Cincinnati Bengals. Absolutely. I'm trading for all of these guys. This is everyone on the team that is at least least bit serviceable I'm trading for. You got New York Giants coming up. You got the Commanders, the Rams, the Eagles. You got Detroit, Chicago, Green Bay, Minnesota, New York, Indy, Houston, Jacksonville, and Philly. That is a phenomenal schedule coming up here for the Cowboys. And if you can land these guys at the prices they're going now, they're going to figure it out. And with the matchups they have, it's it's a great time to buy them. Agree completely, Joe. I think the one thing we can tell the people out there, they have played Tampa's defense and Cincinnati's defense. Yes. Those are hard defenses, guys. And they are going to get – the defenses they're going to play are going to get easier. It's going to be easier to move the ball. Um, this is, I, in my opinion, kind of just a fluke at this point that they've been this low. Um, but at the same time, they couldn't score against Tampa Bay, which is why they're still here. And I think it's going to get better. So I think, Joe, I think you're right. I think these are all trade for Zeke, Pollard, Gallup, if he's not available, to get Gallup on your team, CD. Get, I mean, I would even consider trading somebody for Prescott. Like, if he's just sitting in their IR spot, just see what they've got cooking in there, you know? I, I completely agree. Um, honestly, I think Zeke is one of those guys that you're like, oh, he's only gotten 50 yards each game, and it's just kind of like, <laughs> ugh. I don't, I, I don't want him on my team. That's one of the people I think you can buy the easiest, and I don't mm -hmm. think you'll have to pay very much. Nope. I think as long as yep. you can give them – I'm not saying Jeff Wilson, but that type of player who scored 13 right, to so 15 points. CEH. Are you trading him for Zeke? I'm holding CEH. I'm holding CEH right now. For some reason, Mahomes in those tap passes, uh, Billy, I think, called this in the offseason that uh, CEH is going to have a role because there's not the receivers aren't trustworthy enough, and CEH has held the bag pretty well. So, it's yep. bearing fruit. But I don't think really. he, I don't think it's gonna I don't think it's gonna hold up, but I don't <laughs> think you could quite trade him just yet. I mean, I bring it up because every so. article I read, every uh, tweet I read is trade Ceh now. His value is not going to be this high ever again. Like, I mean, they're probably on. they're I, I probably feel like right. We're onto something here. They probably are right. 
Okay, let's move on to our next offense, which I will take, and that is the Seattle Seahawks. Um, I think that this is a complete buy low situation right here. They have scored 24 points this year so far. They have played the Denver Broncos and the San Francisco 49ers. It is tough to score on those uh, on, on those defenses, especially like they were playing in Denver. So, or no, they played in Seattle the first game, but it's tough to play on apparently in your own stadium because Russell Wilson was having trouble, didn't even hear his own self think when he was playing for Denver. I think Seattle is a perfect situation right now to pick up DK, to pick up Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett had a killer game. I think that that's as they get more comfortable with Geno, I think that's a way to go. I do not think these running backs are somebody, something that you want to trade for. Um, I don't think that they're necessarily super usable because Rashard Penny wasn't very, I don't know, he didn't have a very good game when Ken Walker came back. Neither of them really, you know, blew off the page, but maybe this, maybe this is sign of things to come. Maybe this offense will get better, but I think Seattle is a buy low because they are going to be losing a lot of games. And I think that this is a team that is going to be throwing the ball quite a bit. I definitely agree with you. I think um, my one pause, one guy, I mean, Gino does not throw deep. He, no. We haven't seen him really throw deep. So I'm worried about Metcalf. Lockett's probably awesome for those, you know, cheap PPR points on there. <laughs> but because the lack of the deep ball, you're also putting Walker and Penny at risk here. So I like, I definitely like getting Lockett on my team. I think he's, well, after last week, probably a little bit more expensive but uh i'm not super high on dk yet coming back and definitely rashad penny i'm down on because walker they, they threw him right in and he had 25 percent of the snaps so i think that's only going to increase so rashad penny's workload scares me a lot I, I would love to know the stats on this i don't know why everyone thinks dk metcalf's a deep ball receiver he really isn't it's it's lockett that was the deep ball receiver in the past and so obviously lockett has a little bit more speed I'm not panicking on DK personally right now. Um, he's had seven targets a game. He looks fine. They're just not breaking for anything. They're giving him little three yard passes that he has to dink and dunk for seven yards. So it, once the play calling gets a little changed, I think they're going to have to work DK in and you know, he's going to get touchdowns because he's the biggest body on the field. Um, obviously the 49ers have a really stout defense and I'm not worried about that part. I will say one person I am buying right now is Kenneth Walker. Uh, and you might not even have to buy him. He might just be on uh, waiver wire because we've seen one game from him. They abandoned the run really early in that game, and they are they did not look back. Walker did fine. I mean, it was like he didn't get enough carries to warrant anything, uh, but Penny didn't look good either, and that's the thing. So if, if Penny had a big game, I'd be like, Ugh, a little worrisome, but they abandoned the run really early. It was Walker's first game. Keep an eye on him at the very least. See if he's uh, in on waivers, because honestly, I could see someone dropping him because they're you know small bench or just don't feel like holding on and waiting for Seattle to be good, but uh, they're going to have to run the ball to make be a football team at some point because Gino can't carry it on his own. So I, I'm a big fan of trying to buy Walker really cheap right now. Yeah. And Probably just true. to clarify, I, I'm not panicking on Metcalf. I'm just not trading for him. Oh, 100%. I'm not trading yeah. for anyone on Seattle, except for maybe Walker. Yeah. If you could like add him into a trade somewhere else or something, or just like get him off the wa waiver wire. Like I actually really like to know what his own percentages. Yeah. Um, and then as far as the tight ends go, I mean, you probably – got fan thinking that that was going to be the number one on this team, but it looks like they've got a committee of tight ends that they're going to throw out there each week. So I don't really think you're going to have any of them that are going to be paying you back anything. Just so adds more to the tight end headache this year. Yes, it sure does. The committee, the top, the tight end committee, which is apparently a new strategy teams are using this year has just grown a fantastic headache for a lot of teams. I think it's just an everything committee, man. And if Taysom Hill keeps doing what he's doing, we're going to see a quarterback committee. So <laughs> Nice. Uh, back to uh, Ken Walker. He's actually owned in 59% of leagues right now and down 10%. So people are dropping him right now, and I think this is the time. And there's no – I'm sorry, but there has been nobody on the waiver wire. I don't know why anyone – like I dropped uh, Pacheco and Sky Moore thinking I'd, I'm going to – like normal fantasy football, I'm going to go find new players. <laughs> There was no one there. I sit here and I go, oh, my God, why did I do that? Like, what am I going to go trade him yeah. for? I should just kept him at this point. Yeah, uh, it, so just, it cracks me up, the overreaction and these, you know, the people that don't pay attention all year. And then they read all this stuff about the draft and they draft the rookie because it was the next available guy in their draft queue and then uh, drop him immediately. It just cracks me up. I just I love, can't I love imagine dropping Kenneth Walker after one game of play and a bad game. It was like, oh yeah, he sucks. And it's like I can't imagine dropping him after what he did at Michigan State. 
I mean, this this is when this is where people not watching college and they just see a name of rookie and they see it listed on their little draft sheet. Like this is where that all goes out the window. Like it just doesn't do anything good for. That's why we do the tailgate. Exactly about bias. Well, that's why we do this podcast around draft season to try to help people out and understand who these people are. But hey, if you're not listening by now, you you know you're just missing out on the free information. (laughs) Okay, let's move on to the next team, Um, Josh. I'm going to give this one to you, and that is the Patriots, who have also scored 24 points so far. So, Josh, what would you like to do with the Patriots? Dump them all as fast (laughs) as you can. Literally every (laughs) single one of them. Damian Harris did have a fine game last week. And of course we saw uh, Nelson Aguilar's broken play touchdown where the defender tried to go for the interception instead of just putting a hand out and batting the ball down like he should have. Um, so Ramondre Stevenson, everyone told us, Oh, he's going to be really good. He's going to be involved in the past game. Uh, he has what five targets. Oh, sorry. My apologies. Three targets. Yeah. Not involved in the past game whatsoever. The tight ends have been a dumpster fire since they signed them both to giant contracts, trying to get that Hernandez Gronkowski thing going again. That didn't work. They're, they're, they don't even actually barely equate to one tight end at this point. So uh, you're not if you own if you have them on your team, you should just get rid of them. Honestly, I mean, sure, keep them if you want, but I, I'm done with them. Uh, Stevenson and Harris. Harris would be a really good time to dump him, but honestly, he hasn't done terrible. Uh, he had 15 carries last game, so uh, sure, take that as you will, but. I, I don't. I mean, Jacoby Myers. All right, my apologies. Jacoby Myers actually has had a serviceable couple games, and he's getting targets. So, sure, keep him. Uh, but yeah, that's it for me. Like, I'm out on everyone else. I'm not banking on Damian Harris to start. Ramondre Stevenson's riding the bench. Uh, try to get him. Try to add him to a trade if you can, or wait for a good game and try to flip him. Yeah. I mean, the thing with Harris is he's playing like 40% of the snaps. He's just getting the ball every time he's in there. So he's not doing much of anything beyond just getting the ball a limited amount of times. Ramondre Stevenson's playing more snaps, but he's not as efficient. Now, I have seen people drop Ramondre Stevenson. That That is a pickup for me because if Harris were to go down, uh, we've seen what Stevenson can do in the past. The other guy I'm very interested in is Devontae Parker. Week one, he played 100% of the snaps on the offense. Week two, he played like 92 or or something like that. He's out there every freaking snap, so you'd have to imagine that he's going to start getting some passes thrown his way now. Um, so he actually it's a name did, I'm monitoring. Not to interrupt you, but uh, he actually did have a really nice route, and a defensive player just made a really great play on a deep ball for him. So Devontae yeah. Parker is being targeted out there, and they're not bad targets, but... Yeah, I just I didn't mean go don't drop Ramondre Stevenson. Just trade him. Like let's just get him to someone else's team. Don't, don't just have leave him on the bench us. until we I, uh, be better. I, I think it's a hold right now. I think this is why we don't give Matt Patricia play calling duties um in the preseason. <laughs> I think we've kind of proven why that is not something that we should do. Um he was never an offensive coordinator before, and we're finding out why. Um Yes, this team, like, I don't think they even know who the good players on this team are. Like, I, I know that I'm speaking as somebody who is just a fan of football um, that tries to analyze fantasy football. I don't appear, I don't think it appears that they know who the good players are on the team. I, I just don't. Because, like, and I know that this is just me being a little bit of a homer around this player, but Kendrick Bourne is a good player. He's not out there very much. Uh, Jacoby Myers, we tried this experiment last year with him. They're doing the exact same thing again, and it's having uh, literally the same results. Like, I just don't I don't understand what the process of um, their talent uh, evaluations are because it does not appear that they do any <laughs> at all. So, yeah, I would hold some – like the, the players like Ramondre, I would hold Damian Harris. Um, I don't know how you can hold the tight ends or receivers and feel good about it. If you need a bench spot, those guys got to go. Okay. Except for Jacoby. I'm saying dump them as in trade them once again, because I don't believe in Mac Jones. Mac Jones hasn't looked good enough to make these running backs have consistently good games. Unless they just commit to what the Eagles did last year and just go run, 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 run and give them both 15 carries a game, which uh, I think one player got 15 carries in one of the games so far. So, I just, to me, it's like, they're not a run team. They're not a team. Like, they're just, this is just a bad team. Like they're going to have one of the higher picks and they're probably going to be drafting a replacement for Mac Jones. Probably. Absolutely. So. 
Okay, I'm going to move on to the Tennessee Titans, who have scored 27 points. And I'm – Joe, believe me, I'm saving the last team for you because I know that they're close to your heart. Uh, but the Tennessee Titans, they – They're growing further away, Billy. They're growing yes. further away. <laughs> um, they have scored, yeah, 27 points so far. Derrick Henry has uh, – it, it looks like we're finally getting to the end of the road for the machine himself. I, I – I don't know. I think there may be two, one too many replacement parts on the uh, on the old machine, and I don't think he's going to quite make it through the end of the season because that old line is just not good enough, and he does not appear to be able – because they used to do those swing passes out, and then he would just bowl people over. It's just not working this year, and I think it, it stems from the injury he had last season. Um, I think the wide receivers are all trade targets. Traylon Burks is a trade target. Kyle Phillips fumbled that uh, punt return, and they just put him in the doghouse the rest of the night. He didn't even touch the ball after that. He wasn't even on the field, I don't think. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty positive. The game did get out of hand pretty quick. The Bills were crushing him. But Kyle Phillips, I think, is a trade target. Traylon Burks is a trade target. Robert Woods, I think, is a trade target. I do think this offense is going to see better days. It's just they're not equipped to play the Buffalo Bills. They're just – it's not going to – like they used to be able to – like run the ball and run, 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 and then try to eat the clock away and then get big passes. This team's not very not, not that good anymore, so we're kind of stuck with who we got here. No, absolutely. Um, Derrick Henry is a massive buy low for me right now. Agreed. I do not think Father Time has caught up to him just yet. I think the play at quarterback is just abysmal. And, yeah, you're completely right. The Bills are just a completely different level of team to the Tennessee Titans. But – Tennessee had playoff hopes before the season. Their fans have playoff hopes. If they lose to the Raiders and if they lose to the Colts or if they lose to the Commanders or they lose two out of those three games right there, Malik Willis is starting after their bye week for week seven. And if Malik Willis is in there, Derrick Henry just ramped up to a whole new opportunity right there. And I think it's absolutely going to make him a stud for your playoffs. There. All right. Let me, um, let me so, add on to hello. that. And I'll let you yeah. talk again uh, because I was going to say the exact same thing. I was trying to let Billy finish, but I can't let you finish because you stole the words right out of my mouth. You know who's <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm happy that we're on the same page. I think Derek Henry is a massive buy low right now. I think you are buying him. If you can, you know, who's a great trade target for him right now. Clyde Edwards, Alaire running back number five, he was drafted at least somewhat high enough to where people had the Henry. You might have to add on something else there, a wide receiver or uh, something decent, but uh, him or like, I don't know, AJ Dillon, who's had a nice role. Uh, someone in that like mid range, like you didn't draft him as your first round pick. A lot of people probably aren't buying him yet, but if he has another game where he only gets, you know, three to four yards per carry, the thing is he looked fine against the giants. He just didn't break out anything. That was all that came down to. He's always averaged three, three point five, four ish. Uh, but whenever he breaks out a big one, that always adds up to a lot of points. They played against Buffalo, and there was no chance in hell they were going to win that game. So and they took him out halfway through the third quarter yeah. too. So I he would have ended the up. That with... sheet that these people are looking at is very deflated. <laughs> Said would we trade Clyde edwards helaire for Zeke? Nope. But we would we trade him for Derrick Henry? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. uh, you're buying Derrick Henry right now if you can. That's my biggest take here. Uh, there are better days ahead, as Joe also alluded to. Malik Willis is coming in sooner rather than later at this point. T Tannehill looks terrible. Um, I will say that uh, one person you do want to hold right now and, and or try to trade for is Traylon Burks. He actually has looked <laughs> fine. He's just not getting enough targets and not enough yeah. work because the team is just bad. Uh, we'll, we'll get to Woods later. I'll talk about him on the next pod. <laughs> Okay, well, let's move on to our last team. And Joe, with 29 points, um, it's your Chicago Bears. So, please, uh, what yeah, should we do? I think we were, like, number three on this list. I figured we'd be at the bottom but uh, um, on that one. So, Chicago, right? There are better days ahead for this offense. San Francisco is a great defense. It was a horrible game. And then Green Bay, I mean, they just lit us up from the start. And they have a very good defense as well. Now, I'm not saying Chicago has a good offense. I'm just saying Mooney is going to get more targets. He is the number one wide receiver on this team. They're going to figure out a way. He might have 14 targets this week against Houston just to get him going. So they're going to get him involved in this offense. Justin Fields is going to start moving more, start running, start making bigger plays. And I think we're actually going to see Komet. I, of course, it's been half a decade at this point. Who the hell knows if Komet's ever going to do anything. But 
they're going to be fine. So if you have Montgomery, mm-hmm. if you have Mooney, if you have Fields, and they start doing stuff for you, you trade them because they have a week 14 buy, and that's right when your playoffs are for fantasy. So I want you to hold your Chicago players. In fact, you could even buy them if you wanted to, but let them have some big games or let them start doing stuff and then unload them to strengthen your team for the playoffs. That's where you, I'm at on the Sorry, team. you're saying Chicago Chicago Bears players. You're talking about Mooney and Montgomery. Maybe Khalil yes. Herbert. Okay. Yes. Just wanted just wanted to clear that oh, up. Oh yeah, Herbert's you're a saying phenomenal. players as if there's like this this <laughs> Herbert's another of, guy I'm seeing everywhere on waivers right now. 25% up, man. Mm-hmm. roster percentage right now. He was the yeah. only guy to run for over 100 yards against the Bucks last year. Like he's very talented and he's just going to keep playing more, so get him on your team. If something were to happen to Montgomery, you have an absolute stud on your bench already. Thank <laughs> you.